joins us now. Uh, and we always been always look forward to hear his views. And this time around, we have literally managed to juggle him and we've wrestled him out of his meeting with a late minute interview request. So, Rain, thank you very much. I know it's been a helter skelter for you, yet you've accommodated this interview request. So, thank you very much. No, always, always a pleasure, Nikunj. Hiran, uh, while we managed to wrestle you out out of a meeting to you know join us on ET now, the feeling for a lot of investors now is that of FOMO, where uh, they have not, uh, they just want to now come and they want to jump on the bandwagon desperately. So, how would you map the risk reward ratio for the markets now for next couple of months in the run up to the election and post that? So, I think Nikunj, uh, you know. Uh, the thing is that we can see the FOMO effect in the IPOs, right? Because the kind of liquidity that is going into the IPOs tells you that there is so much of cash lying on the sidelines. And on the other hand, people who are quite apprehensive going into an event like the state elections. Uh, but I think you know, it's still not late uh, to be part of what we all believe is a long-term structural bull market. As you remember, Modi ji said that this is not an era of war. Just like that, this is not an era to be bearish on the Indian markets, right? This is an era to be bullish on India. So my sense is that there is still an opportunity uh you know uh, while the small and mid caps in general and the broader markets have done phenomenally well over the last 6 9 months i think the large caps in general have lagged and so i think investors want to participate it's time in my view that elephants will dance so i think there is still an opportunity in the large caps not to say that there is no opportunity in the small to mid caps, but I think in a bull market, there's always sector and market cap rotation. So uh, my sense is that, uh, you know, at least in the run up to the elections, you may now see uh, some of the larger cap stocks which have moved sideways should also start to participate uh, in this bull run. Really, do we see that the discount between large cap and small cap is so stark? It's always the other way around. Large cap, they move up and then small cap stocks, they catch up. Right now, the tail is wagging the dog. Now, India's market cap to GDP is already 4 trillion. And historically, when the market cap to GDP has gone above 1, that's always a red sign according to Warren Buffett uh, market cap to GDP indicator. So my question is that market have already run up. And if large cap stocks now participated, won't we reach then what could be called as froth or a bubble level? So Nikunj, uh, uh, you know, this is obviously a broad indicator. But if you look at the US market, right, it has stayed above, the market cap to GDP has stayed above 100. In fact, it is closer to uh, more like 130, 140% for a long, long period of time. Right? So there is nothing to say that uh, market should always be below, uh, you know, market cap to GDP should always be below 100. I think there will be times when uh, the opportunity and the visibility of growth in India relative to other markets is significantly better. So I don't see a reason why our market cap to GDP cannot consistently remain above 100%. I don't think we've reached those absolute bubble valuations. How can we talk about bubble valuations when until recently uh, your Nifty was uh, for a two and a half years was largely in a consolidation phase. We had similar Nifty levels in September, October 21. And up until the last few days of this year, the Nifty was hovering around 18,500, 18,600. It's only now that we've broken out into new highs, right? And at 18 times, 17 and a half, 18 times one year forward, I don't think we are excessively valued as a market. There can always be pockets of overvaluation, but I think overall as a market, I don't think we are overvalued. 
So let's pick up some themes where there could be a combination of value as well as growth. Uh, when we spoke to you about a year ago, you had identified EVs, you had identified manufacturing, you had identified to some large extent luxury consumption. Are those themes still intact? So Nikunj, I think long-term leadership in a bull market doesn't change, but it is quite possible that some of these sectors which have done so well may, con may go sideways or there might be a time correction. And maybe some of the sectors like financials which have lagged may now uh, do well in the near term, right? So a definition of a bull market is that everybody participates. Somebody participates early and somebody participates late. So my sense is that while the leadership in this market will continue to remain in capital goods, in manufacturing, in PSUs, but I think it is quite possible that uh, large banks and FMCG might also join the party for a while because in a bull market, everybody performs, some higher, some relatively lower. So I think it's time, as I said, for the elephants to dance and some of the sectors which haven't done well might continue to party, but that doesn't mean that the leadership changes. I think the leadership that has been there with manufacturing, with cap goods, with autos, uh, with defense, with PSUs will continue to remain. I don't see that changing. Uh, where are you debating internally and also with your uh, you know, team that uh, should we stay invested or should we book profits? I mean, it's a difficult choice because stocks have run up and valuations are not very cheap in the stocks which you own. So where are you debating this internally? Nikunj, there is no debate. I think we are very clear. We have to ride this bull market. Obviously, unless we believe that there are some stocks where the valuation is completely out of whack, or maybe because of risk management, if certain stocks have become a very large part of our portfolio, we may trim it. But I think the idea is not to sit on cash or to book profits. I don't think that's how you play, that's how you play a bull market, right? I mean, between 2002-03 to 2007-08, uh, one of the defining moments was that uh, if you never got off the horse, right? Uh, if you didn't try to be too smart trying to catch the tops and bottoms, but if you just stayed invested, then you made the best uh, optimum uh, utilization of the bull market. Look, I mean, these kind of secular bull markets are not going to happen every time in a country's uh, life history. So when it comes, you got to clutch it with both hands with a lot of conviction. And I think we... And within our team, we have sufficient conviction to stay invested and not sway by, you know, short-term volatility or, uh, you know, we may take advantage of some overvaluation by trimming a couple of positions here or there. But I think we are very clear. Uh, we are, you know, we are remaining fully invested and committed to this market. And since we are playing a little bit of... Uh... Animal zoo game here, we're talking about elephants and we're talking about horses here. Let's talk about the cubs. Which are the cubs of the market where you want to catch them young and they could be the tigers of tomorrow? So I think, uh, Nikunj, they are across sectors, right? I mean, uh, uh, whether you want to catch a tiger cub or a lion cub or, a, or an elephant cub doesn't really matter. But... As I said, uh, there are opportunities in manufacturing. Uh, there are opportunities even in, in higher end consumption, uh, premium consumption. Uh, there is opportunity in, in, in all the sectors, right? So I think we are agnostic to where we uh, uh, see opportunities. But, uh, you know, we have looked at opportunities uh, in very specialized areas like tech, infrastructure, consumption, where these companies are still sub 10,000 pro market cap and where we believe that many of them could be 4x, 5x 
over the next couple of years, right? So I don't have a specific sector bias, but I think the opportunity is large and wide. Uh, and we believe that, uh, you know, we have to pick and choose. So it's more bottoms up than top down. So Hiren, uh, let's look at uh, themes where markets have been disproportionately excited. Defense, power, railways. Uh, are these businesses, these are great businesses, you know, year from now, two years from now, three years from now, the businesses will be bigger. The companies will be bigger. Profits would be stronger. But are markets pricing in FY27 and FY28 kind of a, you know, earnings setup already? You're right, Nikunj. I think in many of these sectors that you mentioned, the markets uh, are pricing in, uh, you know, better growth, higher for longer, right? Um, on the other hand, when you look at areas like uh, rural consumption or agrochemicals or even specialty chemicals, I think those are areas where stocks have corrected and the near to medium term weakness is being seen. So it's about portfolio construction, right? I mean, you have to stay with the leaders, but you also have to be mindful of the fact that a lot of the future may be in the price. So that means that your, uh, uh, you know, your time frame is elongated for you to really make money. And look, I mean, even in these sectors, who knows, right? I mean, uh, they may continue to surprise even on elevated valuation. So we don't know. Uh, but I think that, uh, as I mentioned early on, that from a risk reward perspective, it is quite possible that sectors that haven't participated or hasn't haven't done well may incrementally now participate. Uh, so, you know, there are opportunities there from a risk reward perspective and some of the darling sectors might go sideways and time correct for some time uh, but again you can't time all of these things you have to stay invested if uh, you really believe in the structural story which we do exactly a year ago for the december year end special the names you mentioned were largely the smashed out names out of fashion names uh, paytm zamato and that call has rather worked well for you where are you picking your spots right now? I mean, what could be if, if comeback in consumer tech and fintech was the trade you identified in December 2022, what would you like to identify for our viewers in December 2023? Nikunj, I'll come back closer to the end of the year. But, you know, you mentioned about the internet names. I think last year was a great time to buy them. Uh, my sense is that... Uh, if in 2024, uh, we do have interest rates correcting uh, and the US Fed cutting rates and then, you know, followed by a rate cutting cycle in India, I think there is a long way runway of growth for companies like Zomato and Paytm. So I think we still like them. I think there are there is still an opportunity to make money there. Uh, but, you know, difficult to see uh, i would think that if you are a long term investor right now we are looking at uh, you know areas like you know specific opportunities in agrochemicals uh, chemicals pharma and even a few select manufacturing companies that have still not run up that dramatically where would you be tempted to block or lock profits, whether it is risk management or a pure call on perhaps, you know, valuations? Because ultimately, when you're buying something, you'll have to sell something because you're fully invested. That's how you'll have to change orientation. So as I said, right, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we would trim in some of our, uh, uh, you know, early bets that we've taken uh, in 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 manufacturing or uh, for that matter any any company which has become an outsized part of our portfolio right i mean you know uh, we've done very well on the erd side uh, in tech some of these companies have really done phenomenally well and we could take some money off the table there and reinvest there in other areas that i mentioned right 
Um, so, I mean, that's more a portfolio management decision than really trying to reflect our view in terms of where we are bullish uh, uh, in the market cycle. So, I think we'll continue to remain invested in the leaders. We may trim it here or there, uh, but, uh, you know, I think that, uh, as I said, uh, there is opportunities in every sector, frankly. I don't want to single out. Uh, and, uh, you know, we will look at opportunities where we think. And as I said, that, uh, uh, you know, it, at the margin, uh, it looks like that uh, many of the large caps might do well in the run-up to the elections. Uh, and maybe the mid and small caps can join the party back uh, a couple of months down the line, right? So that's quite possible. Is the large cap or which are the large cap stocks you're particularly excited about for next 12 to 18 months? I would say cement, cap goods, uh, banks. These would be the areas that I would look for in large caps. You know, bank and cements, there are mid cap cement stocks, there are large cap cement stocks, there are mid tier cement stocks, there are regional cement stocks. Within banks, there are private banks, PSU banks, regional banks, old PSU banks. Just narrow it down for us. Well, I think right now, uh, uh, large private banks, large cap cement stocks, uh, I think that's how we would look at it, right? With and large cap auto as well. With banks, don't you think it's a challenge of positioning because... You know, I'm yet to find a bear on HDFC Bank. The only bear on HDFC Bank, I think, would be in Baikalazu. So my, the whole the whole challenge with banks is that it's one of those spaces where everybody is fully invested, or perhaps is benchmark, uh, you know, bank, bench, benchmark committed. Yeah, I mean, they had a good run before that, right? In uh, in 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 the recovery of COVID, uh, you had a great run. Uh, also, you they had the best time in 22-23 when both, uh, you know, when all three, uh, NIMS, credit costs, and credit growth were in their favor. And also the stocks were relatively over-owned. And uh, since FIs were absent from our market and they were consistently selling, there was also a technical reason why the banks didn't do well, right? As I said, I don't see them as the leader of the next bull market for sure. But will they participate and uh, will there be a mean reversion in their returns? I certainly think so. Uh, I think private financials, especially the lenders, were the leaders of the previous bull market. I think this time within financials, the non-lenders could be uh, a part of the leadership uh, pack, right? So your exchanges, your, uh, uh, you know, online brokers, uh, your uh, what you call market infrastructure players, asset management companies. I think those have a better chance of being leaders of the, uh, of the bull market. But I just feel that given the underperformance of the large banks, uh, uh, you know, you can't have a new bull market and nifty hitting new highs and these guys not participating. So, Erin, uh, you're on air and we got live queries saying that, okay, Hiren has already promised for a show for year end where he will be sharing ideas. Shall we block the date? It's 5th of December. <laughs> when should we record that show? Uh, to the extent that, you know, compliance allows me. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, happy to, happy to come on air again with you, uh, Nikunj, closer to the end of the year. Some ideas and themes for 2024. Really appreciate your time. So glad you could join us. And thank you once again for accommodating this last minute interview request. Thanks. Thanks, Nikunj. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Okay, let's move on and let's take stock of what's happening in the real economy.